welcome back to Aviary Attorney. Thank you, Pillow Cat, for sharing our Patreon link. That was an ad for what's going on on Patreon this month. We got a lot of good stuff. But for now, we do an Aviary Attorney. We we are back. I am JJ Falcon, and this is my partner, Sparrowson. Hello. <laughs> you got to get back in that Sparrowson Hello. voice. <laughs> Maybe I should put the, the mic here between us. So, so that, that they can hear you in your small bird voice. I'm sure this is delightful for them to listen to right now. You could mute it. We're going to do that. And we officially back. Okay. I am so used to, to doing these by myself that I am not used to keeping the microphone on this side. Okay. <laughs> so, last time on Aviary Attorney, we we were we we, we are we are lawyers in 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 the in the middle of, of, of revolutionary France, and that's why we talk like this. And we <laughs> <laughs> we got hired. <laughs> By some bourgeoisie kitty cat named Senorita Meow or something or the other. And she was accused of murder. And so we were hired to defend her and, and save her. You know, she was this, this rich prissy kitty cat and there's no way she could possibly be a murderer. So, you know, we, we went to the defendant's or the plaintiff's house. We pretended to be cops. That backfired. That was, that was not a good idea. They called us out in court. But we still, we still exonerated our, our client. And it turns out she was the murderer all along. All along. And we have been had. And so now we're going into a new day with a new case. Not as, not as good a lawyers as we thought we was. And, uh, and, and now we're going to see what happens. And it's, we gotta, we gotta keep all four bird eyes open, Sparrison. We gotta make sure that... That, that we we don't get tricked and had again because our reputation depends on it. Mm. We we got we got to defeat these bourgeoisie. <laughs> oh, we got a lot of people with us tonight. I don't know how many of y'all joined us for last time. If you caught up on YouTube, it's up there. I just spoiled the whole thing. But you know what? It's a ride anyway, so it's worth watching. But we're gonna get into this. So we're gonna load the previous day. We kind of we kind of looked at the beginning the last time. Um, but we're going to start over because the only reason we got into this last time was because at the very, very end, I realized that these birds had people hands this whole game. And now, now I can't unsee it. And now because I can't unsee it, you can't unsee it either. So you're just going to be with us in this. <laughs> okay. On to case two. January 7th, 1848. The Palace de Louvre. <laughs> Let us be. Oh. Oh, he looks sketchy. Oh, they don't like those Spaniards. See, this is why I was like, oh, they killed a human? And this, like, oh, you don't know what kind of animal that is because all the animals have human hands. People hands. People hands. Including Sparrison, apparently. <laughs> oh. I knew Falcon wouldn't feel like turning up to office on Friday. But now it's midday on Monday, and there's still no sign of him. This is becoming a little concerning. I should go look for him. His home would be a good place to start. But the bird brain never gave me his address. I'll just have to find him the hard way. I think that, that, that game audio might be a little high, guys. I'm going to turn that down, but there's nothing much to listen to. All right. For centuries, the infamous concierge prison has detained and accused and condemned the like. You think I'm there? I mean, probably, prob probably not, unless I got arrested. I mean, why else wouldn't I be coming to work? 
Clearly they are oppressing me. You also have the AVA attorney offices. That's where you just came from. I was not there unless I was hiding in the closet because, you know, I'm trying to prank you. <laughs> the Palace of Justice hosts the High Court, a place reserved for only the most serious of crimes. I'm not a serious bird. I'm probably not there. You don't worry about that. And then Baron Rouge... This this was a pun for lion. I don't... R Rorgay. That's what it was. Rorgay. That's how we remembered it. Resides at Chateau Crenier, an impressive manor house. I don't think I would have gone back. Well, maybe I went back to the lion's house. I mean, I got him. He ain't there anymore because we got him put in the clink because <laughs> he was he was falsely accused of murder and we helped put him in prison for it. Oops. Oops. <laughs> Wait, you want to search for me, Sparrison? Uh, let's go to the prison. Ah, the prison. I'm probably there. Probably not. Either apologizing to Baron Rouget. Excuse me, Monsieur. I'm looking for my friend. Do I look like a lost and found you? Buzz off, bird brain. All right, then. Well, that was very unsuccessful. You gotta pick some bird better. Let's go to the Palais de Justice. Oh, the court. That's me arguing with the judge. For high crimes and misdemeanors. I don't remember what voice I gave him last time. The he's, rabbit. He's sniveling. Oh, he's sniveling. That's right. Uh... Excuse me, Rupert. Oh, it's it's you, the, fir the first year dropout. Hey, I didn't drop out. I was forcibly ejected. But that doesn't matter right now. I'm looking for Falcon. Have you seen him? Falcon? The guy who somehow blundered his way through the Cataline trial with help of some very dubious evidence? No, haven't seen him since the um, trial. Oh, well, thanks anyway. Well, you got the the lion, the lion's garden, and you you got the place you just came from. So I think by 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 deductive reasoning, by deductive reasoning, I'd probably have to go visit all the places before I go back. Probably. <laughs> Excuse me, Mademoiselle Duhat. Uh, down here. Oh, there you are. Is Lieutenant Robinson right? What? Oh, yeah, that's right. That's me. Oh, 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 oh yeah, because cause, cause we, we pretended to be cops and we're still on this bit now, apparently. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have heard the case you were involved in. I never would have thought that the Baron was a murderer. Yeah. He, he always <laughs> treated me with utmost respect. But then, I suppose it makes sense that the most ruthless killers are the ones who put up the best facade. Yeah, I suppose so. Say, how's your friend doing? He seemed a little down last night. Oh, you've seen him? Yes. He was brooding in the corner of Le Cagnard Joy, joy yeah. mumbling and drinking. It joy. was a little depressing, to be perfectly honest. I'm Russian again. You know, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, yeah you, you try that. Le Cagnard Joy, you? <laughs> Oh, wow. That's the dingy student bar on Rouane, right? Yeah, Rouane, <laughs> that sounds about right. It's not dingy, it's just a little rustic. In any case, that's an enormous help. Thanks, mademoiselle. Anytime, Robinson. Wink. <laughs> ah, so. Let's uh, go there. The student tavern. I'm going to pick up some chicks. Ah, ah, that's where I got my flu shot, and it hurts still. <laughs> you, you afraid of the bird flu, Sparrison? <laughs> this is, we got the bubonic plague to worry about. Why are you worrying about the, bu the bird flu? What's weird is that the bandage still looks, looks like it's there. That was some sticky adhesive. I took ripped, it off it before noon. Ripped out all your feathers. All right, <laughs> you're in the bar now. Oh, a narrator voice. Sparris and steps to the <laughs> doors of Le Canon Joe Yo, the <laughs> dingiest student ever in all of Paris. His nostrils fill with the pungent aroma of sour wine and bitter tobacco. Nice adjectives. How about you try giving another character a voice at this point? You are, you're a tavern maid who is also an alligator? I think it's a dodo bird. Um, uh, sure. Or a pelican? No, puff. Mm. Pe pe look, I ostrich? think it's a dodo. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, you, Quanell. It's probably a, a woman. Sure. <laughs> well, ruffle my feathers if it isn't little Sparrison. 
I haven't seen you in years. How are you doing, hon? I, I, I like the, the, the almost Savannah mother accent. That's, <laughs> that's, that's pretty good. I'm feeling pretty good, Madam Quinell. Thanks for asking. <laughs> I'm actually here to find a friend. He's a big guy named J.J. Falcon. What would you describe as big? Maybe you just little. Falcon? <laughs> yep, yeah, yeah, that's sorry. Lump's been here all weekend. <laughs> what is cracking you so I, I don't think I can keep up the accent. <laughs> <laughs> he's just been a moaning and murdering and muttering himself all weekend. Frankly, he's been... He's bringing the whole atmosphere down. I'll take care of him, Wink. <laughs> Thanks, Madam of Quan No. It's no problem, hun. <laughs> He's probably still in the corner of the dream room upstairs. I can't tell if you're going for Mrs. Doubtfire or you're without a Santa Claus Santa Claus. <laughs> Which room do you want to search for me in? The cod room, the drinking room, or the entrance? Well, she said the drinking room, so... I should get a bourbon for this. Hmm. Hmm. No sign of him. Mon dieu, I almost stepped on the big fellow. Uh, Falcon, what are you doing on the floor? Hey, Falcon, wake up. I think he's dead. <laughs> wow, the bird's out completely cold. Out. Cold. <laughs> He must have drunk this place dry. Let's see how... How do you wake a drunk person? Wake up, Lieutenant! Hmm. If you kick me, I swear to God. Hmm. Let's pour a drink on his head. Oh, goodness. This is such a waste. Well, I guess it's time for a rude awakening. Do you know how much a drink cost in 1840-some-odd France? Probably a franc. Wakey, wakey. If you're peeing on my head, I swear. <laughs> wakey. Why am I wet? Because they only had a few different types of uh, conditions for you, and that was one of them. Ah, you're good. Good, you're up. Are, are you with us, Falcon? Yeah. Feeling sober? We probably should head back to the aviary office so we can get some work done. I don't understand it, Sparrison. Huh? I thought I did everything right. I followed all the procedures. I found all the evidence. I presented the case beautifully. Except for that part where I lied about being a cop that apparently you're still dealing with, but you know... A guilty feline walks free while an innocent man sits in custody. Also a feline. Yeah, he is also a feline, but you know, I'm just saying. What went wrong? Where's the justice? What, what, what do you reply, Sparrowson? That, that, that. Oh, you helpful. <laughs> Sorry, Falcon, I don't have the answers. But what I do have is a freshly baked croissant from Pierre's Boulangerie. Bohangalais. <laughs> Croissants. Yep. They're waiting for you back at the aviary. You know the birds are gluten-free, right? I am. I'm sitting here moping about justice and you offer me croissants. Croissants. Croissonnaise. Well, it's not just croissants. I got some pan au chocolat, too. Chocolat? I could go for pan au chocolat. Fantastic. Then let's make a move. All right. I admit it. These croissants are amazing. I told you. Pierre's Bohanger area on Rue Verde is something else. Oh, that reminds me. The baker told me something interesting. Do you know what they call pine new chocolat in America? I don't know, but we're going to start calling it the American version now on. <laughs> they don't call them pines new chocolat? Nope. Pronounce pronunciation difficult. You don't say. American is a whole nother language. So what do they call them? 
Chocolate croissants. We gonna call it that too. <laughs> what what intarnation is that? <laughs> um, Who are you? What? I don't know if I have a smaller voice. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Chocolate croissants. What do they call profit rolls? Oh, I think those are still profit rolls. <laughs> but rather than custard, they fill them with ice cream and smother them in melted chocolate. Filled with ice cream and smothered with melted chocolate. Is he describing an ice cream sandwich? <laughs> Simply outstanding. Is this the aviary attorney? C can I speak to someone, please? Well, what do they call crepes? Excuse me! Did you just hear something, Sparrison? I did not. Down here! Oh, sorry, I didn't see you there. What can I do for you, little one? I'm not even going to look down. My neck doesn't work that way, but, you know. You'd have to... Oh, gosh. Where to start? Your name, perhaps. It's Mousy. <laughs> no, this is Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> Mousy! My name is Mousy! <laughs> Mousy's getting a little gruff. <laughs> And what can we do for you, Monsieur Mousy? I have this friend! And he's fallen under some legal turbulence! Legal? Legal? It's, I'm acting against myself, Sparrison. You sit down. Legal turbulence? You mean he's... That is Boston. I, I don't know <laughs> where that, that's coming from. You can differentiate. <laughs> legal turbulence? You mean he's been arrested? Uh, yes, I suppose so. They're saying he's a murderer! But he didn't do it! He didn't do it! That's quite a problem. I know! Oh, but I forgot to mention, he's the Prince of Spain! The Prince of Spain? And you didn't think that was worth mentioning from the start? I forgot, I forgot! I must ask, Melcy, why did you come to us? I would have thought that the Spanish royal family would hire legal counsel with a little more... Not terrible on this okay you know we speak english we can come up with something better than that expertise oh uh, the prince has great faith in your lawyering skills monsieur falcon he said that your reputation as a lawyer was renowned really the prince said that so he's guilty <laughs> so he's guilty <laughs> this is a great opportunity falcon surely you wouldn't deny a request from the prince of spain I really want to say meh. <laughs> Isn't that a Simpsons term? You know what? Let's see what happens if we say meh. We'll just skip to chapter three. <laughs> it, it won't force us. It'll force us to play the game, obviously. Meh. Dun dun. In the criminal justice system. Meh. I said I do declare meh. Meh. I say meh. Look, Falcon, I know you're still upset about the Dame Caroline's That's trial. That's an easy one, honey. We can get through it. <laughs> but, but more moping isn't going to help. The best thing you could do right now is occupy yourself with some meaningful work. This case will uh, scratch that itch perfectly. Meh. I'm not going to hear it. Grab your things. We're doing this case if I have to drag you by the sleeve. All right, all right. No need to bird handle me, even With though my... you got man hands. <laughs> People hands. <laughs> <Just>. <laughs> but it's man handle. Like, that's the joke. <laughs> no more dilly dallying. Let's go. Good luck to you, Mashers. <laughs> I know why I committed to that voice. <laughs> you aren't coming <laughs> with us, Mousy. I have, mm, I have other matters to attend. I don't even know anymore. To which? To attend to. But Prince Juan has been held in the concierge. I'm sure he will fill in all the details. Was it not Juan A? Eh? All right, let's make a move then to another person who's in jail for something they probably did, and we're gonna be defending some murdering jerk again. Huh. Oh. Good day, Monsieur. I thought I was. You can be Quark. I should give up. Is is Quark the the bailiff also? Quark is not the bailiff. Uh, oh, you you were Quark, I guess. I was the bailiff. Uh, Quark might. No, Quark 
kind of the bailiff. Quark, I don't think... I was the one-eyed guy, I think. I thought Quark had the Roz voice. Yeah, Quark had the Roz voice. You can do the Roz voice better than I can. Okay. <laughs> I have to do the mouse voice. Oh, it's you two again. Hey, nice work on Lady Kitten Trial. Baron Rouget is pacing around in his cell right now, ranting about wringing your neck. Well, I say, I say, I'm not going to say we deserve it, but we might deserve it. <laughs> I'm not surprised. He's, oh. <laughs> He's super mad. But hey, a criminal's a criminal, right? If the lion didn't want a death sentence, he probably shouldn't have killed a guy. Oh, you're not here to defend him, are you? Because that would be hilarious. We're actually here to see Prince Juan... Quierdo. That's Spanish. That's easier. Yeah. Higher to the throne. Heir to the <laughs> throne of Spain. That's, that word is English. I'm not sure about that. It is pronounced heir. <laughs> he are. <laughs> heir to the throne. <laughs> that mouthy fox, huh? That guy's driving me nuts with his seniors and his flamboyant attitude. Well, I say, I say, Quark, that is a little anti-Hispanic, if I may say so myself. I do not tolerate that. We are at war. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on, while you're young. <laughs> we are at war. The Prince of Spain, I presume? Because, you know, you're a fox. Look at those man hands. It got real stereophonic in here. Indeed, I am one here, though. <laughs> you're going to commit to the Spanish accent? Heir right? to the throne of España. And you must be the legendary lawyer, Senor J.J. Falcon. You're actually doing a pretty good Puss in Boots there. <laughs> Well, I wouldn't say legendary. I mean, my reputation does precede me. I su obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't even say notable. Such humility. I would expect nothing less from renowned individuals such as yourselves. Luckily, English is the shared language between us. <laughs> but let us go to business. I trust that my companion are... <laughs> Compañero. <laughs> Isn't that a horse? Mousy explained this situation. He told us that you have been accused of murder, but we need some further details before we can start our investigation. Number one, did you do it? <laughs> uh, of course, what did you want to do? Did you do it? Is really <laughs> the first question we just need to get out of the way. We have had some bad experiences. We are scarred. Let's just tell us, tell us just about what happened. To be honest, Prince Juan, I'm just a little as confused as to how a member of royalty could get in so much trouble. I was very surprised that a bourgeoisie kitty cat got in so much trouble, but it turns out she was in trouble because she did it. So, you know. She, she done did it. <laughs> could you walk us through your activities on the day of the murder? Of course. Let me see where to begin. It was the cold and misty morning of the 6th of January. Okay, I don't need to know the weather and all the embellishments. Just where were you and who died? I had heard that King Louis Philippe <laughs> was unveiling a new painting. I love how you're trying to do <laughs> French words in a Spanish accent. It's wonderful. I do, I do not know how to do this. <laughs> the Palais de Louvre. <laughs> And I wished to meet the man himself. <laughs> so after a brief st stroll and picnic in... Good luck with that one. <laughs> Tuileries Garden, I entered the palace. I found the royal entourage in the... <laughs> <laughs> Grande Galliere. <laughs> When I saw an opportunity, I presented a humble gift to the king. A rose. The international symbol of passion and virtue. 
How romantic. But before the king could take it, a rather rude person snatched it from my fingers. It was a royal guard, a dog by the name of Mehor Howl. Mehor Howl. <laughs> you know, I, I had a moment there where I was thinking, wow, it's kind of insulting for him to call that royal guard a dog, and then I remember the type of world we live in, and he is probably literally a dog. I am probably also a canine. Y you are also a dog. Ouch! cried Mayor Cowell. <laughs> I have pricked myself upon the thorns of this dastardly flower. And then the Mayor <laughs> slumped to the floor. His face turned blue, his mouth frothed, and he died. He died straight away after being pricked? That he did, straight away, Senor. It is obvious that the pricked finger was the cause of death, but I do not know of any poison that acts that fast. Nor do I, Senor Falcon. But clearly, the police felt that the poison upon the rose's thorn was the only logical explanation. Of course, I know nothing of poisons. When I say I don't know any poison that fast, it's because I don't know poisons. I am innocent. <laughs> <laughs> and with so many witnesses, even the king himself, what could I say to defend myself? So where did the rose that you acquired come from? From where did the rose come, you mean? I, I don't need to speak in a Yoda voice. Go ahead with your story. I acquired it from a beautiful Parisian flower seller in Le Halles Market. A girl by the name of Catherine Marie Signe. Let's, let's go with Signe. But surely you're not suggesting that the flower girl applied the poison herself, Senor Falcon. Well, I'm not making any accusations yet. I don't even know what reality is anymore after this last case. I'm just planning to explore Do you think that the poison was meant of... for me? Oh, well, you know, you are the Prince of Spain. So, I'd maybe. Also, what if it was suicide? You never know these days. That's usually the easy answer. Poisoned rose has been added to your evidence folder. Did you want to ask anything else, Senor Falcon? Why were you in Paris, you Spaniard? I already told you it was to see a painting. I mean, a diplomatic mission. <laughs> I do not know whether you are familiar with the current state of events, but you may have heard that my country is in a state of turmoil. I have not heard any of that. I do not read the news. Well, we don't like the English, and we have pirate ships. But, but I'm French. I don't know anything about that. Are people starving and uh, Marie Antoinette's rich? That's all Contenders I know about. Contenders for the Spanish throne are slandering, plotting, backstabbing. It's chaos. So I thought, if I can befriend some French royalty, perhaps even the king himself, maybe I can strengthen my family's name. And you come here and get accused of murder. Well, you're doing a great job, Prince Juan. With the Cerdo dynasty restored, I would have a chance of bringing peace to my beautiful nation. Well, I guess the plan's gone out the window. Ferrison, don't be rude. No, he is right. I feel terrible. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't fret, Prince Juan. We'll do everything in our power to clear your name, assuming you're innocent. Maybe once the debt is settled, you have another opportunity to speak with King Louis Philippe and complete your mission. My diplomatic mission. The to, negotiations to, to did see, not happen. To, to see a, to, to see a, a painting. Thank you, Senor Falcon. I am sure you will do your best. Was there anything else you wanted to ask? Sure, what are you reading? A book. What were you reading before we were so rudely interrupted? Let me guess, let me guess. Three Musketeers, right? I was actually not reading. I was just trying to kill a bug. Ah, of course. It's Don Quixote. Of La Mancha, do you know of it? Readings for squares! <laughs> <laughs> no, I... I... I've read it, but I don't think you have. I've read it! I, it windmill, so... I don't know if I'm supposed to be laughing or crying over his misadventures, as I know windmills! That's what the... That's what it's about. Indeed, it is. Easy, it's easy to read the book as a comedy, but when I look around, I can't help but see all people who think themselves as knights. I have no idea what you two are prattling on about. Not a book lover, Senor Sperhoson? I dabble, it's just not my 
Reading material tends to be on the lighter side, nice and pulpy, like law. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Well, how about this, Signor Sparrowson? I will lend you this book. It is quite pulpy. Maybe you will have a chance to read it, and then you will be able to join us in our conversation about this pulpy book. Thank you. I'll keep it in my bathroom for toilet reading material, of course. I have so many questions about that part of this story. We have bathrooms inside in 1800s France, and we're birds. El Ingizio Hidalgo Don Quixote de la Mancha has been added to your evidence folder. Was there anything else you wanted to know? No, I think that's everything. Thank you very much, senor. What's the plan, big bird? Well, we have two lines of inquiry. We should head to the scene of the crime, the Palais de Louvre, and see if we can find any clues or witnesses. And we should interview the flower girl in the Hell's Market to see if she has anything to say about this alleged poison rose. Two tasks spread over for six days? This almost sounds too easy. Yeah, well, you know, the game's taking pity on us after we fucked up so bad last time. Let's not get complacent. Good luck, senores. I don't know whose voice I was supposed to be there. <laughs> Wait a minute, Falcon. What? Did something seem off about Prince Juan to you? Oh, I can't trust anybody anymore, Sparrowson. He seemed off. You picked up on it, too. It's like the fox was hiding something. Sounds like we're on the same page. Well, look, if this is bothering you, we could always ask around. Maybe someone in the city knows this dirty little secret. If he actually has anything to hide, that is. We yeah, got four extra days dirt. to do stuff. You know, we can, we can really, we can really make sure we are right here. Let's gather some hearsay. But well, we've got a trial to prepare for. Priority, Sparrowson. You can't trust nobody in this town. A new day. We don't do very much in each day. All right. Ah, we could go back to the tavern at some day. We could just start our first day by going to the bar. I know. Let's go to the scene of the crime. Why not that? That's always a good place to start. Falcon and Sparrowson make their way to the pl place to, to the carousel, the courtyard just north of the Louvre's Grand Gallery. That's the Ark of Triumph over there, right? I swear, it's smaller than I remember. That's the Arc de Triomphe du Carousel, you doofus. The big Arc de Triomphe is up the road. Don't you live here? What? No way. There. Why are there two? Because when a man like Napoleon invades half of Europe, he gets to build as many triumphal arches as he damn well pleases. Who's this cock? <laughs> well, well, well. Uh, no, I'm not going to go another guttural voice. We're, we're going we're gonna to do a... <clears throat> Listen mm. to the music. He's a royal person. <laughs> <laughs> ah, royal voice. Let me see if I can muster up a royal voice. <laughs> well, 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 I never expected to see you here, JJ. The, that, 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 that arrogant voice. Yeah. Good day, Severin. Let's be civil, JJ. Why don't you introduce me to your new assistant? Fine, fine, Severin, this is Sparrison, my assistant. Sparrison, this is Severin Cocorico, the most pompous prosecutor in Paris. Oh, are you two old school friends or something? More like arch rivals. Please, JJ, I think arch rival implies some sort of competition. As I recall, we met in court on five occasions, and on five occasions did you get humiliated terribly. I'm amazed a failing bird brain like you is still able to get clients. Me too, honestly. <laughs> Actually, Severin business has never been better. I'll have you know that I am currently being employed by the Prince of Spain, no less. I probably shouldn't be bragging about that. That's probably client confidentiality, but, you know, I am the best. <laughs> the Prince of Spain? Juan Quiero? Well, well, this is quite an amusing coincidence. Don't tell me. You have also been hired. Correct. I am the prosecutor for the very same case. The opposite, actually. Oh, uh, the opposite. I mean, I don't know. I watched this documentary about the amazing Jonathan having, like, four different documentary crews. Who, who says that you can't have three lawyers? It's a pity that the Spanish prince will indubitably hang. But I suppose that's what he gets for hiring a bird brain to represent him. Don't call me a bird brain. You're the only bird brain here, Severin. You're, you're a chicken rooster. 
Tsk. One always speaks badly when one has nothing to say. Voltaire. Uh-oh, he's giving you the verbal smackdown. Quick, Falcon, make a witty retort. I do not agree with what you say, but I will defend to my death the right for you to say it. Also, Voltaire. Are you sure? I'm... I'm... <laughs> I don't agree with your right to... I, I agree with what you say. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> how, how did you know that would be an option? I didn't. <laughs> You're the same bumbling fool you've always been, Falcon. But enough talk. If you messieurs would excuse me, I have a case to prepare for. JJ, Sparrison, I'll see you two in court. Ugh, I can't stand that guy. He did seem, uh, like a bit of a cockerel. But is it true what he said? You know, that he trounced you in court five times? I can deny it. Severin has a reputation as a ruthlessly thorough prosecutor. Mounds of evidence, surprise witnesses. Objection! It's, it's no wonder he always manages to one-up me. He puts jump scares in the court. <laughs> but this time will be different, right? I hope so. I know so, for you see, I stole this annotated map of the Louvre out of Cocorico's pocket when he was busy prattling off Voltaire quotes. Sparison, this, this, that's pretty impressive. I swear you were standing three meters away the whole time. How did that happen? You tall birds are so busy with your heads in the clouds that you don't even notice us small folk running around your feet. Pinching Kokoriko's pocket was like taking candy from a very tall baby. Let's take a closer look. I see. This map shows the entire Louvre arena. Everything from Tuileries to the Rue de Louvre. Most convenient. We're currently standing here in the Place de Carousel. And these pinned-in arrows seem to show the route taken by the king's entourage. Which means that the king first went here, through the Salle de Tibre. And to here, to the Grand Gallery where the murder occurred. Didn't Prince Juan say that he spent the morning in the Tuileries Gardens? That's right. So that means Prince Juan approached the Louvre from the west side, somewhere around here. Sounds like we have a lot of places to visit. Where should we go first? Hmm. Well... I don't know. I don't really remember the route. <laughs> so, we're here. Uh, this is where the murder was committed. Let nope, it. no, no. This is where the murder was nope, committed? Nope, This is where the murder was yes, committed. Yes, yes. All right, let's just go to the scene of the crime. Here we are. The Grand Gallery, the murder room. I believe the murder occurred right under the new painting. Is it the Mona Lisa? Maybe no. be, that'd be a little... That'd be a little late for that. I see hundreds of paintings. Which one is the new one? I have in the foggiest. We'll have to ask someone. How about that porcupine? Uh, Eric Pork. Please don't talk to me. Please don't talk to me. <laughs> you should do this one, actually. Excuse me, Monsieur. You look like you know your Mona Lisa's from your Last Supper's. Last Supper is not in the Louvre, but I don't know that. <laughs> you go for it. I don't want any attention. Maybe he isn't talking to me. Nope, he's definitely talking to me. Keep it together, Eric. Oh, uh, hi. Would you happen to know which painting was unveiled on the 7th of January, the one the king came to visit? Oh, yeah, I can help you with that. It's, uh, the piece right behind you. It's a painting of the king himself. I believe he is an emperor penguin. Apparently, Napoleon is a penguin in this universe. An emperor penguin. Napoleon is a penguin with legs. He's only a penguin from the neck up. <laughs> Let's say leggy penguin. Well, you know, owls. <laughs> yes, I know owls. <laughs> are much more leggier than you think they are. Look it up. That's one noble looking penguin. What do you think of it, Falcon? I find it falls firmly into the uncanny valley. <laughs> After what critic, but I don't care for it. <laughs> Above all else, I must strive to be honest. When I look at this piece, I don't see an honest depiction of our king. He's much shorter and does not have legs like that. 
All I see is a depiction of the man the king wishes he could be. That is an autistic travesty. He is not a man, he is a penguin. We are not <laughs> men. We have hands, but we're mostly still animals. You read all the social commentary from one painting? That's pretty impressive, considering it's just a penguin in a fancy dress. I'm getting the impression that you, uh, messieurs, aren't regulars at art galleries. No, we're right there, we're right there, Philistines. Speak for yourself, Falcon. I've never even been to the Middle East. And and but and you haven't read Don Quixote, and neither have I. But I pretended, so we are. Then I'm guessing you here are to investigate the king's assassination attempt. That's right. We were actually hoping we would ask you a couple of questions about what you saw. Oh, I wasn't even in Paris when the murder took place. I didn't see anything. But, uh... uh, uh <laughs> I have a friend who might be able to help you out. What's this? All in M. Associates, the home of Renard Volpe's private investigator. I don't need no private investigator. I am a private investigator. You are not a private investigator. I don't deal with these gray area of the law types. That's right, I'm not a private investigator. I am a lawyer. I keep still thinking I'm a cop. No, please. Give the guy a chance. He helped me out of a bind before. I'm I'm sure he can do the same for you. You know what I find suspicious? That a porcupine spikes are poisonous and you are a porcupine. How do I know that the victim was not killed that, by that, a porcupine that, that, that spike? That is false information. That is not true. I'm not making any promises, but fine. I'll keep hold of this card and we appreciate the help in any case. Thank you very much. You are now a suspect. <laughs> it's no trouble. Thank you for your time, monsieur. Is there anything else we can do here? Well, ideally, we would turn the whole grand gallery upside down in our hop for evidence, but that's not possible with so many people around. We should probably just move on to another room and maybe come back here later on a different day when it's closed. We got six days. So is this the Sale de Tibre? If I understand Coco Rito's notes correctly, this is the room King and his entourage stopped in before heading to the grand gallery. His room doesn't seem to be very popular. I don't see anybody around to interrogate. Interview. Uh, right, the interview. Well, since it's quiet, maybe we should take the opportunity to do a little snooping. What would be the point? Surely all this interest in evidence would be in the Grand Gallery where the murder actually took place. Think about it, Falcon. The police would have already gone over the Grand Gallery with a fine-toothed comb. We are the police! Yes, and the police did not do a very good job in the other place either. Although they did catch the right person, so... <laughs> yes, they did. We should maybe trust them more. <laughs> but I bet the numbskull Inspector Volarity <laughs> didn't even think to check this room for clues. I remember Inspector Volarity, Vol Vol but I do not remember how he sounds. We'll figure that out later, I suppose. <laughs> there might be a murder weapon just under our beaks. Your logic seems a little questionable, but it couldn't hurt to have a look, I suppose. Especially since the murder weapon was a flower. Yeah, well, we we can see if there's anything fun in here. That looks like a vase. A shiny copper urn. I guess it was used for carrying water for cremated remains. So probably not both at the same time. It smells good. Don't sniff the exhibit, Sparrison. Especially if they're cremated remains. No, really. It, this urn smells amazing. It's almost chocolatey. You poor thing. You're hallucinating from hunger. Would you like to stop by a bakery on the way back to our office so we can get some chocolate croissants? Don't patronize me, Falcon. My nose never lies. There's chocolate there, and I'm telling you. Now you're touching the exhibit? That's definitely a no-no. See? Look what I found in the urn. Put that down, Sparrison. It's someone's old rubbish. No, look, it's a chocolate wrapper. Judging by the smell of the chocolate was bitter and dark, 70, perhaps 80% cocoa, Belgian in origin. The level of wrapper crumbling and the firmness of the chocolate residue indicates that it was discarded just a few days ago. So what you're telling me is some disrespectful fool threw his trash into one of the exhibits. Yes, I am certain the chocolate contained in this wrapper was undoubtedly consumed on the 7th of January, the day of the murder! Mon Dieu, Sparrowson, you deduced all that from smelling the wrapper. Imagine what I could work out if I tasted it. That won't be necessary. If you could apply this level of critical thinking to areas outside of food, you would be the world's greatest detective. Even though we are not detectives, we are just lawyers. If 
You're a lawyer. <laughs> if only all evidence was edible. So do you have any idea which shop this chocolate was purchased from that might help us track down the person who consumed it and they will become a suspect? No. There's no possible way we could know that. I suppose we will just have to visit every confectioner in town and sample every bit of merchandise for comparison. What a chore. I'm done with this bit, Sparrowson, because I can <laughs> see Lander Halshik's Chocolate Emporium written on the wrapper. Well, you can't blame a bird for trying. What about here? I'm not sure what this is. Some sort of stand, a podium. Maybe it's just decorative. It's a Roman doorstop. Roman doors were enormous marble slabs, so the doorstop had to be similarly large in order to stay in place. I don't think that's right. My uncle's a Roman historian, trust me. <laughs> All right. I see a cabinet full of engraved plates, mostly bronze. How much do you think they're worth? Whatever bronze is going for these days. 300 francs a piece, at least. What? Are you serious? I'm in the wrong profession. I don't think archaeology works as a great rich quick scheme, Sparrison. Who said anything about archaeology? I'm going to become a museum robber. Oh, well, that's one way to get rich quick. You could also be a lawyer for criminals. You only have 59 francs. That's 59 more than we had before we did this case. This is some sort of ceremonial container. It's beautifully crafted, but what did it contain? Maybe it's an arcane wine cabinet. Don't be so ignorant, Falcon. This is the sacred Mesopotamian artifact gifted to Emperor Hadrian for his victory at Euphrates in 123 AD. Let me guess. You read the plaque. All right, all right. You got me. This could be a hippo's chamber pot for all I know. Where else is that? Oh, this heard a click. podium. These columns have been designed to look Roman. I think the style is ionic. It's not Ionic, Falcon. Iony is when a character says something, but the reader doesn't know it means something completely different. That, that, never mind. Obviously, we are missing I, oh, something. Oh. There was a click. There was a click. Where was the click? A supporting column. It's holding the roof up. That, that's my... If the column were truly supportive, it, it wouldn't hold the roof up. It would encourage the roof to get <laughs> to its location on time. <sighs> Is there anything else? There's got to be something else. The game has not prompted us to leave yet. The game has not prompted us to leave. We are clearly missing something. What is it? I heard a clicker over here earlier. I don't think so. I guess we can probably just back out. We did not find anything. Well, we found the chocolate wrapper, so that's probably what's useful. We're done here, for now at least. We can't spend all day staring at Roman artifacts, I suppose, so where to next? Oh, let's go to the garden, I suppose. Our feather-headed friends wander through the immaculately maintained Tullier's gardens. Nothing seems out of the ordinary until they spot a familiar face picking up litter by a tree line. Hey, Falcon, doesn't that groundskeeper over there look familiar? Yeah. Now that I'm looking at him, he does look a lot like that photographer. What's his name? It Ro was Robito Robino. Robito Robino. What was Robito Robino's voice? I forgot. If he's going to be a groundskeeper, we could maybe give him a Scottish accent. <laughs> I do not remember. I <laughs> Did someone call me? Oh, it's you. The lawyers who don't appreciate a masterful photograph when they see it. Awful. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see that you gave up on your artistry dreams to pursue the more grounded career of groundskeeping. I, I'm not doing this willingly. I was given community service for committing perjury. Can you believe that? They gave me, an esteemed photographer, community service. Me! Yeah, I can believe that. Perjury is somewhat serious. You should be thankful that you got off without jail time. Poof! You sound just like that self-righteous Judge Maxime. Sue, did you two want to ask me something? Are you just here to gop? 
Personally, I'm just copying. Actually, I do have a couple of questions if you don't mind, Monsieur Robino. I got a simple question and then I got a serious question. <laughs> I don't suppose you bumped into a Spanish Vox who goes by the name of Prince Juan, have you? How do we know that he's actually the real Prince of Spain and not an imposter fox? Uh, that's my theory right now, that that ain't the real prince. I mean, we don't got the internet up pictures or nothing. How are we supposed to know? He can just say he's whoever, and we don't got ID. A Spanish fox? No, I've never met anyone like that. If this is about that assassination attempt on the king, then you're asking the wrong person. I only started working here today. I see. Was there anything else you wanted? How's the groundskeeping job working out? Terrible. Tourists are pigs. Sometimes literally. Look at all this rubbish I found. Beer bottles, tin cans, apple cores. And look what I picked up by this west entrance. A book page. A whole book I could understand, but a single page. What kind of blithering moron loses just one page? Wait a minute. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> wait a minute. May I take a closer look at that, monsieur? Don Quixote? That's a page from Don Quixote! May I take it off your hands, monsieur? Sure. What's it worth to you? What's it worth? I, it's trash. It's literally worthless. You, you were just gonna throw it away. Then I suppose I'll be destroying it, as per my duties. All right, all right. I suppose you deserve a little compensation for your... T it is so hard to keep Southern and Irish separate. <laughs> <laughs> Irish. <laughs> Irish. How about you give me the page and... I don't know, Sparrison, what do you think is the most likely thing that we can do? I don't really want to give them money, although five francs is not that much. They're probably not going to turn, they're probably not going to accept five francs. They're probably going to be like ten. I could speak with Judge Maxime. That seems the easiest. That seems like the nicest thing. I, I mean, don't think you're we, gonna... we, we did defend a murderer, and this guy got screwed for it. We'll, we'll talk to Judge Maxime. We How about that? just drop some of his pictures on the floor. I'll, and that we... I'll speak with Judge Maxime. I'll, I'll put in a good word. I might be able to get your sentence reduced. Really? You do that for me? Thank you, monsieur. I would really appreciate it. Here, take the page. Page 44 of El Ingezio Hidalgo Don Quixote de la Mancha has been added to your evidence folder, and I am really surprised if my Don Quixote it is missing page 44 upon closer examination. I knew it. Did you want to ask something else? That's all. We'll let you get back to work, monsieur Rubino. I love that lolly. Sounds like me trying to DM too many NPCs at once. Uh, all right. Let's go back to the place de Carousel. Are we all done here? I think so. I mean, I don't think there's anything else left for us to find. I hope not. <laughs> we found a lot. Let's make a move. We, we can't always come back later. That's... All right, new day. Let's go talk to that flower girl now. What do the clocks mean? I don't know. Maybe it means it takes a whole day. Oh, and then there's the private investigators as well. Oh, yeah, let's, let's go to the market. Let's talk to the flower girl and just see what she says. The pair arrive at La Hell's Market. Vendors and buskers, performers and thieves, bourgeoisie and peasants, all bustle from place to place. Prince Juan said they met a flower girl here. Signy, I think he said her name was. There's a swan with flowers over there. Do you think that's her? I think so. It's possible that she knows the murderer, or even that she is the murderer herself, because everybody is a suspect. I trust nobody anymore. Excuse me, Mademoiselle Flower Lady. We would like a word. Tact, Sparrison. Tact. We've been over this. Let's just do another female French accent. Good day, monsieurs. Are you interested in purchasing a flower? Purchase, purchasing a flower. Yes, I wish to purchase a rose from my lady. I'm afraid that I'm out of roses. I sold my last one a week ago. Perhaps you would be interested, satisfied, with a chrysanthemum instead. <laughs> 
Tis a beautiful flower from a fair maiden. Stop trying to flirt, Sparrison. He fell out of his nest as a baby, and he's said dumb things ever since. Hey. Apollo just noticed that we have hands. We've been saying this the whole time. It's nasty. Let me introduce myself. I am J.J. Falcon, defense attorney, and yes, I do have man hands. Are you Mademoiselle Signe? That's right. Catherine Marie Signe. I suppose you're here to ask about the royal assassination attempt. How'd you know? I am no fool, Monsieur. I know that a rose I sold was used as a murder weapon. To be honest, I'm surprised it's taken so long for someone to directly question me. The Parisian police seem to have a habit of missing obvious leads. Sometimes because they are innocent. So do you mind if we ask you a couple of questions? Business is slow. Please, ask away. Who's your supplier? <laughs> Normally, I gather them from the wild. Last week, I found these chrysanthemums on the city limits. And that's the same place I discovered the monks stood. But since it is still winter, I have to buy a lot of my flowers from merchants who travel to Italy and the Netherlands. Is that how I acquired the rose? What can you tell us about this particular merchant? Not a lot, Monsieur. He is just an old man who passes through Paris a few times a year, selling his goods and wares. I see. No chance of him being a super secret assassin. No, Monsieur. Did you want to ask something else? Mademoiselle, you mentioned that you sold your last rose a week ago. Who did you sell it to? The person who bought the rose. I did not catch his name, but he was a charming red fox. Sounds like our one. I met him about a week ago, on the, the 6th. We talked for a little while, about the usual things, you know, like how everyone seems to be in death these days. <laughs> then he bought a rose and left. I hear that the fox is on trial, but to be honest, monsieur, I, I don't think he's guilty. Oh? Why is that? Because he's hot? Well, actually, never mind. It's just a gut feeling. What do you think, Sverison? I, I want to... I, I kind of want to know what it is. I, I mean, we, we've been nice to her. She's not gonna... She, she, she's not gonna be mean to it. You know, like, I think we could... We could put a little... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can put a little pressure on her. We can do it with her. Mademoiselle, it just so happens that we're defending this particular fox in the court de assassination. If you have something to say that could prove his innocence, now would be the time to let us know. I'm sorry, messieurs, I can't. Hmm. Wait, Mademoiselle Signe, wait up! Damn. Nice play of tack and finesse, Falcon. You scared her off. I was nice! I was trying to make a case. The Swan obviously knows something crucial about this case. We need to get to the bottom of whatever it is. Agreed, but I don't think she'll be in the mood to tell us anything. Well, we'll come back tomorrow and she'll forget all about the day. I know. Why don't we try acting with a little more tact and finesse next time? Hush. Well, they slammed the door on us. Day three. I guess we can go look at your chocolate emporium. I think you can do the voice of an elephant. Ah, oh, it's a Belgian elephant. It's a Belgian. <laughs> Good luck. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to Landers Hagelslocks Chocolate Emporium, the finest Belgian chocolate shop in all of Paris. I really hope your boss isn't watching. I very much hope not to. <laughs> I am Lander Hegelsock, <laughs> the founder and owner of this establishment. And I'm J.J. Falcon, defense attorney. Good day, monsieur. Oh, lawyers. Very fancy. I must say, I once dreamed of a big lawyer, but uh, well, circumstances won't allow it. It's a funny story, you see. I was a young boy. I befriended son of Hungarian attorney. Why? Why? Why does the Belgian accent forbid you from breathing in the middle of a sentence? That's what I'm used to hearing. <laughs> Falcon, you have to help him. Me help. What, what? What is it? It's the smell, Falcon. It's overpowering me. It's demanding that I lay waste to the shop. For pity's sake, restrain yourself, Sparrison. Oh, but I'm rambling, aren't I? <sighs> <laughs> 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 
So our <laughs> new munch is here to buy some chocolate. Yes. No, no, no. We're we're actually here on business, Monsieur. Business. First things first. We believe that this chocolate wrapper originated from your shop. Are we correct? Oh yes, yes. That is the trademark Huggles Locker <laughs> wrapper for genuine Belgian Huggles Lock chocolate. This was almost certainly bought from this very establishment. Very good. With that established, there is something else we wish to ask, Monsieur Hagelsack. Oh, could the chocolate have been poison? That's actually kind of a good question. The rose may be a red herring, Sparrowson. Like the red herring was in the red herring case. Can you tell us who bought this chocolate that was contained in this wrapper? I'm afraid not, Monsieur. Well, of course you can't. I'm sure 15 people a day buy this. Not just because of matters of confidentiality, although confidentiality. it's a factor that you understand, but I... It's because I couldn't possibly know that. I thought elephants never forget. My memory is impeccable, Monsieur, but you must understand I have dozens of customers a day. There are hundreds of people who couldn't have potentially bought this particular item. Why is it monotone rambling? That's what I'm used to hearing. <laughs> so your memory is good, but you need further information. If we were to give you the description and name of a person, would you be able to tell us whether they purchased something from you? Oh, yes, yes, I could probably do that, Monsieur. Let me think. That's me. Let, let me let, think. Let me, let me think who to ask let's about. Let me think, too. Um, <laughs> well, the obvious choice is, uh, is our fox friend, Juan Quiero. Have you ever served Juan Quiero, the Prince of Spain? A prince of Spain, no, monsieur. Well, that's good to hear. Our clue would have turned into a dead end if our client turned out to be the chocolate fiend. I did once serve a princess from Mali, but if it helps any, you see, uh, I met a girl while hiking through the Himalayas. Please stop. Let me think. Who to ask about? Who else we got? We got, we got the flower girl. That's a good one. We could ask if he purchased his own chocolate. I don't know about this, uh, this porcupine guy. We could ask about him, too. Maybe the mouse. Maybe the mouse. Hey. Or, what's that thing? Oh, oh, oh Coco Rico. Oh, that's the dog. That asshole. Major Howl. He's that the was, dead guy. That was the dead guy. Could be the oh, dead. Oh, let's see. Could Maybe. be the dead guy. Oh, the dogs can't eat chocolate. Dogs can eat chocolate. You are right. Have you ever served a royal member of the royal guard by the name of Major Howl? No, monsieur. Are you sure? Yes, Monsieur, I have served many soldiers, but I don't recall seeing a major in recent memory. What does that mean, Falcon? Have we lost our lead? Not necessarily. It just means the Major Howell didn't buy the chocolate that may have killed him. There's still the possibility that someone bought the chocolate for him. That's our lead. That's who we want to find. I did once serve a high-ranking officer from the British Army who was on his way <sighs> no, to No, I don't want to hear that story. Let me think about who to ask about. I don't know how many times we're able to ask about people. We got, we're, we're, this is the third time. This might be the last. Uh, oh, there's Rubino de Rubino. I think he's okay. I think uh, we, it could be the mouse. The mouse was the assistant to to the prince. He's so tiny, he could have bit him and oh, nobody would have known. I would have been afraid known. of a mouse. I probably just gave him the chocolate so that he would go away. <laughs> Soft-spoken mouse. <laughs> Your voice versus soft-spoken mouse. <laughs> My name's Mousy. <laughs> <laughs> well, so so should we ask about about the mouse who might have just been given the chocolate because he was afraid of him and wanted him to go away? We could ask about the Swan Lady. Porcupine's kind of a long shot, so really, the Swan Lady or the mouse? She's also soft-spoken. What's she hiding? I think she's not... I think she's innocent. I think... I think we need to look at this mouse. Have you ever served a tiny mouse named Mousey? No, Monsieur, mouse terrify <laughs> me. Monsieur, I'm growing tired of this endless inquiries. Perhaps you could come back another day. You know, for, uh, mm -hmm. You know, Falcon, uh, it's possible we haven't encountered the chocolate fiend yet. 
Rather than coming back here every day making aimless guesses, we should wait until we have something specific in mind. You might have a point, Sparrison. Thank, for, thank you for your time, Monsieur Haggleshack. Hag, <laughs> Haggleslack. We shall return when our investigation has progressed. I need time, Monsieur, except for right now, because I'm tired of the endless questioning. I want to answer questions for the Prince of Day Belgium, four. you know. It's the Belgian Prince that... All right. <laughs> we got to do two days worth of investigation. On the third day, we go back and we find out who the Chocolate Fiend is. Where do we go now? We could talk to the private investigators. I don't know. They could help us a little bit. I don't know if we'll find anything at the bar. Should we go back to the Louvre? I don't think so. I don't I don't think there's any more information there. I, I don't know if it's the right choice to go to the bar or go to the private eye. Oh, goodness, I don't think there's anything at the bar. I mean, that... I think the reason we might want to go there is because uh, of all of the lawyers who may have encountered uh, the prince in other cases. He, there was something off about him, remember? Yeah, there was something off about him. We could we could also uh, check out the other people. Uh, okay. <laughs> really, Falcon? I thought you were done with this mopey drinking. We're not drinking, we're networking. <laughs> Tavern's a fantastic hub of information. If we wish to learn more about Prince Juan, then this would be the ideal place to start asking questions, and I'm going to pretend like that was my idea and not yours. Oh, that's a pretty good thinking. <laughs> <laughs> you get to be her again. Oh. Oh, you two are back? Are, are you feeling any better, Falcon? Much better. Thank you for asking, Madam Doubtfire. <laughs> That's great to hear, hon. Will you be your usual? No, no, I'm back to investigate. I, I gotta keep it sharp. I'm not gonna patron your bar, nothing. I'm just gonna loiter. We wanted to know if you've seen the Prince of Spain around here recently. A Prince of Spain? I I don't know if you've noticed, hon, but this ain't exactly the classiest pub in Paris. I'm lucky I've served the occasional bourgeoisie. Bourgeois. <laughs> You can forget about seeing a member of royalty. Well, that's a pity. Maybe I should ask some of your patrons. Feel free. I don't care if you talk to the patrons. Uh, Rufus and Powell uh, playing cards in the attic, as always. We get all sorts of colorful characters in the drinking room. Oh, I bet if you rattle enough cages, you'll find someone who knows whatever it is you want to know. Thank you, madame. Let's see, where to start? May as well start upstairs and work our way down. Come on, pal. Just one more game of Jacques Noir. Absolutely not. My wallet is hurting enough as it is. Please, I'll even let you deal this time. The answer's no, Rufus. I'm skint. If you want to play cards, you'll have to have someone else. Fine, now that's that big, big fella. Excuse me, monsieur. Uh, d uh, d yes, you, monsieur. The big fellow. Did you play some Jacques Noir? I'm not a big bird. I'm, uh, sure, I'll play this. We'll learn. Steal me in. Very well. Do you know how to play? D d nope. <laughs> I'm only familiar with Seago and Tap to Rock. Oh, this is a much better than those silly games. Let me tell you how it works. I've got a deck with uh, values between 1 and 11. I'll do you one card at a time. If you hit 21, you win. I give you five francs. Five francs? That seems a little steep. This is a man's game, on shore. Only children gamble over petty sous. Besides, higher stakes make for a more exciting game, right? I suppose so. <laughs> Uh, all right, this is 21 is what we're playing. Blackjack is the other name that it's called. All uh, right. Four. Four. Hit me. Five. Hit me. 17. Uh, you might want to stand yeah, at I'm 17. Yeah, I'm thinking I want to stand. It's not a good hand, but... Dealer's turn. I win! 
<laughs> well played, Monsieur. Here's your payout. Shall we have another round? No, I need to ask you some questions. I'm done. Maybe another day, Monsieur. I understand. You just take my money. I'm not going to answer any of your questions because you didn't play long enough for me to win. We'll see what happens in the drinking room. Maybe we'll go back. <laughs> Do you want to be the dog or the toucan? <laughs> it's a parrot. I'll be the dog. You'll be the dog. I'll be the parrot. <laughs> so there I was in the grasslands 10 kilometers down the river, rifle in hand. And I've been pursuing this set of footprints for an hour. I was getting closer and closer. I could almost smell the beast. Then I spotted it. It was a boar. A big, stupid boar. Completely oblivious to my existence. I readied my gun. I carefully took aim. And BAM! You shot it! No! It was the most peculiar thing. The boar slumped over dead right before I took the shot. Sounds like one of them heart attacks. Me now went the same way. That's what I thought. But then, I went to a closer look, and I noticed the boar was frothing at the mouth. Mm, that, wow, it was rabid. Possible, but I don't think so. I remember reading about the frothing in the mouth as a symptom of poisoning. Now you're going for the boss in Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer, the head elf. <laughs> Herbie wants to be a dentist. Either that or the Charlie in a box. <laughs> Charlie in a box, that was the one. Yeah. You know, nobody wants a Charlie in the box. <laughs> Needless to say, I left the dead animal alone. Ah, good call. Who wants to deal with hated meat? Not me. I'm curious about this boar. That sounds like poison. Excuse me, monsieur. Yes, can I help you? You say that the beast you were tracking might have died from poisoning. Could you give us some further details? Further details? I'm not much of a poison expert, I'm afraid. Well, what do you think cost it? I would guess something bad. <laughs> I saw that poisonous plant. Uh, wolf's bait, I think they call it. But really, I have no idea. I'm I'm a hunter, not a vet. Excuse me. Would we, would we call all our doctors vets? I'm a veteran of, uh... You are a veteran. No, Excuse I'm a me, hunter. Monsters. What is it? What, you, you go. Well, what is it? I don't suppose you've seen a Juan Quierdo around here. He's Spanish. Royalty, supposedly. Foxy fellow. Swanky hat. Calls everyone, senor. That doesn't sound familiar. Do you recall seeing anyone, Piero? I got, I got a clue. Sorry, I'm sure you're barking up the wrong tree. Well, what can you tell us about the Spanish royal family? Like you'd know. Matt, do we look like walking encyclopedias and something, Matt? I'm afraid my game Padre has a point. If you want to talk about hunting, then I'm your man. But Spanish royalty, that sounds like a question to be answered at the library, Monsieur, not a tavern, even if this is a student's a tavern. A library? Maybe you're right. Sorry for bothering you, Monsieur. Leave them be. Let's give them some peace. Let's investigate the entrance again. Are we ready to hit the road? Not yet. I got more money to win. I'm playing more cards. Ah. Deal me in. Very well, then. I you know, know how, how to play. play. I've been playing for <laughs> years. Yeah, all right. Don't get cocky, Falcon. Very good. <clears throat> shall I... I shall be the dealer. We will bet five francs per game. Here we go. Hit me. Hit me. Damn it. <laughs> Unlucky, Monsieur. Motion for an engine. Yeah, engine. do Shall me. We have another round? Hit me! Hit me! Well, 
one, two, three, four, five. Has to be at least a six. I would have to get a six in order to not go over 21. So you have a one in the rest of the deck chance. I'm going to stand. But he's probably still going to beat me. He'll go over. Maybe. Ah! I win! I got my money well back. Yeah, yeah. So clearly this, clearly this is just a way to make money. This is, this is not... They don't have any information. All right. I guess we gotta go home now. Sure, let's go. I don't feel like that was all that helpful. Aside from Wolf's Bane. Wolf's Bane! He's a wolf! You know who's a wolf? Probably, maybe. Uh, occasionally, special cinematics marked by an exclamation mark will pop up on the map. They're only available for one day! But they take no time to visit. What is this? A storm is brewing, my brother. Word of the royal assassination attempt has spread. Is this some Freemason stuff? The proletariats grow confident the bourgeoisie are cowering. It won't be long before we have riding. What kind of animals are those? Those are foxes. I mean wolves. And then a revolution. I think Prince Juan is an imposter. You think he's I actually I think a... Prince Juan. I think Prince Juan is an imposter Robin Hood character. He is one of us. He is a proletariat person his royalty. That is why he wants to meet <clears throat> with the king, because he's trying to assassinate him. Um, so RNM Associates. What biblioteca? They were a uh, that's new. Face. Yeah, they they were wolves. Oh, they were wolves. They were they were proletariat wolfes. What if they know about Prince Juan because he's one of them? But we also have the biblioteca. Perhaps the biblioteca will show that he is just a picture of the actual prince of Spain. <laughs> All right, Sparrowson, we got we got one two days left but the second day we got to go back to the chocolate place so we cannot we got to choose between the biblioteca or the private eyes private eyes are watching you and now we know wolves i don't know guys what do you think should we go to the library or should we go to see the wolf private eyes i mean i think the private eyes can at least give us a lead maybe they're following this investigation and they have information that can help us in our investigation that, that they would be willing to share, because the library is kind of a crapshoot. We don't know what we're going to find there. It doesn't there. have a clock next to it. That is also true. Maybe it would not take up any time. I think I'm going to go with that. Oh, customers! Mousy. Uh, Hello? <laughs> That's not his voice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I do declare. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, is this the office of Renard Volpez? Ah! It's you too! Mouser, what are you doing here? Uh, this is where I work. R&M, Renard and Mousy, Monsieur Renard Volpez and I carry out all sorts of investigations together. Although, to be completely honest... It's normally Monsieur Volpez who chooses which taste to take. I see. Well then, can we speak with Monsieur Volpez? Uh, I'm afraid that won't be possible. He's he's on vacation in England. England? But but he is set to return in a week. Oh my God, Prince Juan, it's Monsieur Volpez. That has got to be the twist. That is what this is. Maybe you can come back then? Oh, that's not good for, to us. Our, our case will be over by then. There's nothing to be done about it. I suppose we'll have to come back later. Now, that didn't take up any time. Very good. Okay, so let's go to the Biblioteca, I guess. And then go back to the chocolate place tomorrow. I bet he is Volpez, eh? That's gotta be the twist! He, he is, is a wolf! wolf. And, and the he's... wolves are trying to invade the city and take down the royalty. Monjou Volpez. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Vol Volpez are, are foxes and Lupes are, are wolves, so... 
Well, maybe Juan is a fox. He's obviously a fox. They said a charming... Uh, yeah. He's they, a red fox. They're all foxes. Well, same difference. It doesn't matter. The point is, why is it the, the mysterious fox wolf man, who is also a private investigator, and who also... also works fox, with Mousy. And also works with Mousy, and then there's all these wolf underground nonsense going on in the, in the sewers of France. This is happening too. And then all of a sudden you get this guy showing up claiming to be Prince Juan who carries around Don Quixote and calls everyone senor like you'd think a Spaniard would if you weren't actually Spanish. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. I think he's an imposter. I think he's pretending to be the Prince of Spain and he wants to get close to the king to assassinate him and start the French Revolution. That's my theory, Sparrowson. I am on the case. You think that assassinating the king would stop the French Revolution? No, it's got to start it. We got to take. We got to take down Napoleon. Maybe this is king, after king the King Felipe. King Felipe. Well, but then this Napoleon is also in. A, he's a penguin. I don't know how the politics work. I'm just saying. I think that he is part of the resistance, but. That means that if he is an imposter, we, he must be protected because we are on his side. We are also the resistance. So we're going we gonna to pretend. We're we going to let him know that we know, but we're going to still pretend like we're not going to tell anybody. It's, it, we, we got his back. I'm following the Hunt and Beagle's advice. Don't eat poison pork? The other piece of advice. If we want to learn about a member of royalty, we should hit the library. Oh, that makes sense. We're going to find out the Prince Wall's picture. Say, Falcon. I've been meaning to ask, since we're in the library and all, are you a classic literature fan, or do you prefer more modern works? <laughs> Readings for squares. Give me a good modern opera. Good call. Nothing beats a well-made show. Speaking of which, I hear they're performing La Damnation de Faust at the Opera Comique... I would sell my soul for front row tickets. <laughs> what are you? Nathan. <laughs> the, whore, <laughs> the donkey. You, you want to do a donkey voice? <laughs> All you can think of is Eddie Murphy, right? <laughs> no, I, I hear the e haw in the music. <laughs> I don't know what to do for a donkey voice. <clears throat> you, you you wing it. I my 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 throat hurts from mousy. Would you mind shores mind lowering your voices? I can hear your squawking from the other side of the building. Apparently this is nay SMR. <laughs> my apologies, Monsieur, we'll keep it down. Wait, you're a librarian, aren't you? An astute observation. Yes, Monsieur. As the only quiet person in the library, I am most assuredly the librarian. Well, mm -hmm. Well, now that we have your attention, my friend wants to ask you something. I, I do. Oh, right. I, I, I do. I do. What can you tell us about the Spanish monarchy? I don't need your praise. Spit out whatever imbecilic question is in the back of your throat. Well, we understand that the Spanish throne is currently under dispute. Can you give us a brief rundown of who the contenders are? What a trivial question. Even an elementary school child can name the immediate heirs to the throne in Europe. Y yeah, but, but for the sake of those children in the audience who slept through that class, can you refresh their memories there over the, for the audience? Not for, uh, we know. Very well, pay attention, because I'm not repeating myself. The current reigning monarch of Spain is Queen Regnant Isabel II of the House of Bourbon, daughter of King Ferdinand VII. Upon her death, the crown would likely fall to her husband, King Consort Francis, Duke of Cadiz. Although it's certainly possible that an immediate family member could stake a claim. However, the Queen's position is currently being disputed by the Carlists, headed by the Count of Montemolin. I hope that answers your question. So does she have a son named Juan? Did, 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 you, did you catch all that? 
Not a word. Monsieur, we're actually interested in Prince Juan Quierdo of Spain. I don't think I heard that name in your explanation. A Prince Juan Quierdo? Is that what you said, Monsieur? I think you've been misinformed. There is no current Prince of Spain, and I'm not even sure Quierdo is a real name. <laughs> it is certainly no line of any Spanish monarchy. How strange. What does that mean, Falcon? Well, one thing is for sure, our client is not the Prince of Spain, which I suspected really early on, by the way. Maybe he's a delusional lunatic, or perhaps he's involving us in some sort of con, or perhaps his name is Renyard Volpez, he's a private investigator, he works with Bowsey, and he says he's on vacation in England. We don't have long before the trial, but it may be in our best interest to confront Prince Juan directly and get some answers. Right, or, or, hear me out, we just say that the Prince of Spain is absolutely guilty, and therefore it can't be him. Sure. Are you two quite done chit-chatting? Leg asp, as Nib says. What can you tell us about Don Quixote? I mean, while we're here. Don Quixote of La Mancha, it's a classic. Everybody has read it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, everybody. Yeah, but for those who haven't, like those in the audience, maybe. Yeah, in the audience. I'm not going to sit here and summarize a great work of literature for two imbeciles who are too lazy to read. Nor would I expect you to, Monsieur, but what can you tell us about the physical book itself? This particular book didn't come from any library, if that's what you're asking. See? There's no library stamp or card. I assume it was acquired from a bookshop, a French bookshop, if the French translation and publishing information wasn't a giveaway. I see. Thank you. Did you have any other questions, or can I get back to work? That is all. I think we are done here. Thanks for your time. <laughs> then I bid you a good day. We only got one day, Sparrison. I don't think we have enough information to go to the Chocolate Emporium unless we just throw out random guesses. We have met some interesting new people in the meantime. Could go to the concierge and confront Prince Juan, but what would that accomplish? That doesn't get us any closer to who murdered the. Ro oh well, maybe it was him because if he's an imposter trying to bring down the bourgeoisie, maybe he did kill the royal guard. Although the royal guards aren't royalty themselves, they're just gutter folk like ourselves. Nothing makes any sense, Sparrison. This is a crazy world we live in with people hands. <laughs> I think we're going to have to play this one by ear. You don't. Know, all right, well, we're going to confront him eventually anyway in court. I want to know who had the... Is the chocolate a red herring, you think? Wolfsbane, though. Wolfsbane would have to be in the chocolate. Do you think that now that we know about Wolfsbane, we should go to the... Uh, we could go talk to, to the, the girl. Oh, the, and, the... and it don't cost no time. Uh, okay. That's strange. I don't see any sign of the flower girl. Yeah, she probably scared her off with your crazy tack and finesse strategy, dummy. Or maybe you scared her away with your horrendous and inappropriate flirting. I'll have you know that I can flirt like a peacock in tail fanning mode. We really don't have time for this discussion. Let's just continue our investigation elsewhere. Now that we know that Wolfsbane is a thing, then we could go to the Palace de Louvre. And it don't take no time. I was talking about the Louvre. A little early, aren't we? Just scoping the place out. Come on, Falcon, we got some investigating to do. Wolf's Bane, you said. Because he was in the garden. He was in the garden. And we know what we're looking for now. So we can either go there, we can go to the Chocolate Emporium, or we can go to the Concierge. The game seemed to suggest that we go confront Prince Juan. But the game has led us astray in the past. <laughs> But we know that Wolfsbane... We still gotta solve the murder. We know that there's something fishy going on with the prince and stuff, and that he's an imposter pr private investigator, and we probably understand the motive, but the thing is, is, like, maybe he isn't the murderer. Maybe he was just undercover. Let's go to the garden. Oh, well, maybe that was a bad idea. Well, damn. 
Looks like that porcupine left the building. I just wanted some more details on this Renyard Volpez, but I suppose we'll leave it for now. Not yet. Well, this was the wrong idea entirely. This was a complete waste of a day. I guess so. We gonna go to court all unprepared now. No, we can't come back later. Well, damn. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Are you feeling nervous, Falcon? I'm not gonna answer that. Don't go silent on me now. Senior Falcon, I trust everything is in order. Absolutely, I have every intention of bringing the truth to light in this trial, even if it means throwing you under the bus. Ah, oh, such confidence. That's magnificent. And bringing the truth to light, you say? An admirable goal. No more housing at imaginary giants. All of you cease your yammering. The door's opening. Here we go, buena suerte, senor Falcon. We will. Are we ready? We're ready. Remember, Judge Maxine has the order voice. Mm hmm I do. <laughs> JJ. Severin. Nervous. Why would I be nervous? I'm not nervous. I'm calm as a cuckoo. You're the nervous one. This whole courtroom is nervous. Whoa, cool here, Feathers Falcon, even though we don't have any evidence and we have no mm, <laughs> plan. Terrible. You can't even maintain a stoic facade. I thought this trial would be the perfect opportunity for you to redeem your previous embarrassments. But if this is how you act before the trial has even started, why, you pompous tail, posture perfect... I guess you judge Romulus today. Order. Order. Let's all settle down. Court is now in session. You, you're not you're not going to commit to the real order voice? It's a different person. Who cares? They all the same. <clears throat> what is it? Is it me or does the uh, primary judge look hairier today? That's a different judge than the one who resided over Dame Catalina's trial, you doofus. Oh, still a little strange, isn't it? Yeah, that has suddenly become a wolf? Yeah, I do think that's a little strange. Or all the... Ah, oh, the jury ain't wolves, at least. That's you. Yeah, I'm trying to... Who's Judge Carmilly? That, that's, that's the judge you just... I thought that was Maxine. No, Maxine's the old judge. This is the new judge. No, the, the, we that, just that, said that this... judge was Romulus. We just said... Oh, well, that's a good a good point of view. Oh, no, this is... This is, this is, this is just some bird on the jury. Who cares? Judge Maxine has temporarily gone on sick leave due to a terrible accident with a flight of stairs. But rest assured, assurers, prosecutor, defense, and members of the jury, I am more than qualified to fill his shoes. Without further ado, let's get this show underway. This is the trial of Prince Juan Guiardo, who stands accused of murdering... Major Howell and conspiring to murder the king himself. You know, Severison, I was thinking that we were on the side of these, you know, rebellious wolves, but uh, I don't know call. how I feel about this. The defense is president and ready, Your Honor. Please don't eat us. We don't taste like chicken at all. He does. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. Good, very good. I expect this to be a nice, speedy trial. I don't want to see this dragged out by technicalities and bureaucracy. Sparrison, I don't know whose side we on anymore. Well said, Your Honor. I expect that once the court sees the overwhelming evidence, this trial will be over in five minutes. For five minutes? He's just messing with your head, Falcon. Keep it together. So we're all on the same page, excellent prosecutor. Please call the first witness to the stand. Very well. 
I call the police officer who investigated the crime scene. I call upon <coughs> Inspector Juste Volerte. Step up to the stand, Inspector, and recite the oath. I can't remember I, I, at all. I remember. Oh, pirate! Yeah. That's right, it was a pirate voice. <laughs> I swear to speak without <laughs> hatred, without fear, <laughs> to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Please recite your name and occupation for the court record. My name is Inspector Juste Volerti. I am the servant to the law, a scourge to the gutter rats. That will do, Inspector. We've heard your monologue before. Well, Kokoriko is going for a speed record, isn't he? Now, can you tell us what you witnessed on the morning of the 7th of January? Of course. At 10 o'clock, it was the morning I was called to the Louvre Grand Gallery by one of the king's royal guards. Did he just say o'clock? <laughs> there I saw Prince Juan, King Louis Philippe, the corpse of Major Howell, and a rose in his hand, and around two dozen citizens. The citizens and the king himself all attest to seeing Major Howell, taking the rose from Prince Juan's hand, dropping it. <laughs> and what did the morgue undercover? Why, oh, God, it's so hard not to do. <laughs> and what did the morgue uncover upon examination of the corpse? The coroner determined with an absolute certainty that Major Howell died of poisoning. Aside from a prick upon his finger, there was no sign of external harm to Major Howell's body. Therefore, the poisoned rose must be the cause of death. Putting the pieces together, that does seem very implicative of the prince. I have no further questions. Damn, I was hoping that the coroner's report would determine that the guy died from a freak heart attack or something. That would make a particularly speedy trial, wouldn't it? But no, we aren't so lucky. Something else must be amiss in the bird's old, old bird's testimony. Right, I'll tear it apart. Your Honor, I wish to cross-examine the witness. Falcon, wasn't it? Don't waste the court's time. My high-ranking police officer would never lie on the witness stand. Well, well, you weren't here last time. I wouldn't accuse the inspector of lying. I just want to make sure that every base is properly covered. Uh, this sounds pointless nitpicking to me, but I'll allow it for now. Go on, Falcon, do your cross-examination. All right, 10 o'clock in the morning. How about that? <laughs> Don't waste. Poison and two dozen citizens. Let's, 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 let's look at our evidence. How about that? Don Quixote, which was missing, that proves that he was in the garden. All right, you know. We got uh, the rose, page 44, found by the West Entrance. Business card for Renner Volpe's private investigator. Chocolate wrapper. We do not have any evidence, Sparrison, that is worth anything. Hmm. Mention the poisoning. Yeah, I'm thinking poisoning is a little questionable. How do you know it was poison? Correct. He's stated the signs and symptoms were textbook. There is no possibility that his death was natural. What kind of poison was it? He was not certain. At first, the coroner posited that it was a plant-borne poison, like that of the aconite flower. But when he learned how fast the poison had taken effect, he noted that this was a typical of aconite. Consequently, he suggested it must have been a, some new engineered concoction. A newly engineered poison, you say? Well, that only reaffirms that this was a very deliberate... I don't know why I'm southern again. Uh, <laughs> A very deliberate Your assassination Your Honor, he's speaking attempt. out of turn. Indeed. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I'm just going to ask questions. How? For, how? 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 How was how, it? Was, how? it, was, it, was, it, it was, was it through the prick? I mean, it could have. you could have eaten it. His finger was pricked by the poisoned rose. He commented out loud about it seconds before dying. A 
Twenty citizens who witnessed the murder attested to seeing and hearing this. Is there any possibility that he was poisoned by something else? What an absurd thing to ask, JJ. You must he you heard that 22 people saw the victim prick his finger and die. What are you suggesting? That the pricked finger had no relation to the poisoning? That's exactly what I'm saying. I don't doubt that Major Howe was poisoned, but I do doubt that the rose was the case. Unbelievable. Only a total buffoon could fail to draw the blatant link. JJ, as tempting as it is to sit here and lecture you about the basics of cause and effect, I'll end this discussion painlessly. Inspector, please tell the defense that you found traces of poison on the thorns of the rose itself. That should alleviate all doubt that the rose was in fact the poison mechanism. Actually, I can't tell him that. I dread to ask. But why not? We did not trace, check the rose for traces of poison. It seemed obvious that the rose was the cause of poisoning, given the timing of the incident. Well then, now would be a good time to make a test. Here's a marvelous thought. We prick the finger of the defendant with the rose. If there's no poison on the rose, then Prince Juan lives and he's free to go. If the rose is poison, Prince dies. But that's okay, because the punishment would be just and fitting of the crime. A marvelous suggestion. What is this, a witch trial? This isn't America, Severin. That's not how we do things here. Calm your feathers, JJ. It was a joke. I actually think that was a fair idea. There are far more humane ways of testing for poison. I'm sure the inspector will perform his duty with due diligence. And actually, we won't be able to test the rose for poison at all. Why is that? Yeah, given the dangerous nature of the flower, it was a... Uh destroyed by the police force. We burned it to ashes. Such unprofessionalism. If we have no way to know whether the rose was poisoned, then this whole trial ought to be called into question. Nice try, JJ, but through the process of reasoning by elimination, we can still deduce with absolute certainty that the rose was poisoned. In other words, there was nothing else at the crime scene that could have caused the poisoning. Wrong! There was something else at the crime scene that could have contained the poison. Something the investigative police blindly overlooked. The it, chocolate wrapper. There was chocolate. Look at this. What am I supposed to be looking at? It is a paper wrapper of a piece of chocolate. It was found in the Louvre. The Salle de Tibri, to be precise, almost, kind of, basically. And we can date its consumption to the day of the incident. You're not suggesting... That Major Howell ate a piece of poison chocolate moments before he died? I most certainly am, and you know it's certainly possible that it would just poison him because it's chocolate and he's a dog. Intriguing. Pretty convincing. We gained a little favor with the jury, Sparrison. Did you see this wrapper at the crime scene for yourself, Inspector? The police force does not have time nor the resources to trawl every piece of trash at every crime scene, I'm afraid. In other words, you overlooked it? Tisk, astounding unprofessionalism. The prosecutor is right. I'd be disgusted. What a disgraceful display, Inspector. I offer my apologies, Your Honor. I don't want your apologies. I want you to be damned job properly. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> I know. Get off the witness podium before I kick you off myself. As you wish, I'll take my leave. Until next time, messieurs. Back-to-back -back pirate voices. So let me get this straight. The chocolate wrapper was found at the crime scene? Correct. And you have reason to believe that this was consumed on the day of the incident? I do. I have an expert food tasting witness who is willing to testify if need be. You have a foodie witness? I don't recall anyone like that. Who would that be? Oh. I see. Hmm, but do you know for certain that Major Howell consumed this chocolate? Well, that is a fact we are still investigating. I see. And do you have evidence that this chocolate was in fact poisoned? Again, that is something that may require a little more time to definitively prove. So then, in actuality, you don't have evidence that Major Howe consumed some poison chocolate. Instead, you have a solitary piece of rubbish that you plucked straight out of the gutter. That's weak even for you, JJ. Let's move things along. I have another witness I would like to summon. 
He's a man who claims to have had an excellent view of people going in and out of the Louvre at the time of the incident. I call upon Monsieur Toussaint Kingley. Could the witness please approach the stand and recite the oath? What are you? The fisher bird. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Oh, right. The oath. Uh, I swear to speak without hatred, without fear. Tell the whole truth. I think about the truth. Please state your full name and occupation for the court record. My name is Toussaint Kingley. I'm a person who fishes. A person who fishes? So you are a fisherman. Oh, 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 is that how it is? I thought the French justice system was better than this. <laughs> I beg your pardon? Here comes Toussaint Kingley, the kingfisher. Clearly he must be a fisherman, because didn't you hear? All kingfishers are fishermen. Well, you are carrying a fisher rod. And? And? Can a man not carry a fishing rod, reel and bait without being branded a fisherman? Look. Look, the prosecutor's hair in a riding crop. Clearly, he must be a horse jockey. Now, for pity's sake, fine, fine. Can we enlist your occupation as a person who fishes and not fisherman? Thank you. Actually, why do you carry a riding crop, Severin? I have never seen you ride a horse. I don't know, JJ. Why do you, a 30-something-year-old with no health problems, carry a cane? This is varying quite off course. Could the prosecution please get back to his I'm questions? I'm 36, Asperison? I'm an old ass person. <laughs> of course, Your Honor. Monsieur Kingley, is it true that you were nearby the Louvre at the time of the incident? Yes, I was sitting upon a trail of the Ponte Arts. The Ponte Arts? That's a new bridge that's just a stone's throw from the Louvre South Entrance, correct? That's right. How old were you doing at the time of the incident? I was fishing! Ahem. <clears throat> Kingfishers, am I right, Falcon? So you would have plenty of opportunity to see the people who entered and exited the palace. Can you tell us who you saw? Well, it was a busy place. Naturally, I saw a lot of people. But at 9 a.m., I saw the king, Louis Philippe himself, enter the building. He was surrounded by his entourage, of course. Then around 9.30, I saw a shifty-looking fox lurking around the entrance. Your Honor, I object to the witness's use of the term shifty-looking. It is vague and biased description of a fox. No, really, he looked super shifty. I saw him rubbing his paws and cackling gleefully. Then I saw him take out a rose and rub the stem. Rub the stem of the rose, you say? As if he was a... Oh, God damn it. As if he was applying something to the flower, perhaps. Well, I'm sure I really shouldn't speculate. Of course, it was wrong of me to ask such a leading question. Yeah, but yeah, definitely it looked like he was putting something on the powder on the stem. Wow, even I wasn't expecting such a bold admission. Members of the court... Sounds like what we have here is the direct witnessing of the defendant readying the murder weapon. The defense claims that the rose was never poisoned, and yet here we have a man who saw the poison with his own eyes. I smell perjury. You do? No question. He saw a shifty-looking criminal readying poison and cackling near the scene of a crime. That's not believable at all. I think you might be right. I wonder if he has any evidence that calls Dusan's story into doubt. Your Honor, I would like to cross-examine the witness. Really, this nonsense again. You just heard the witness directly describe your client readying poison on a rose. What is there to question? I'm just trying to uncover the truth, Your Honor. Ah, oh, fine. Do your thing. Go on, Falcon. Go make a fool out of yourself. All right, what are we going to do, Sparrows? I don't know. All right, you were sitting on the Pont des Arts, King and his entourage, shifty looking fox. And some sort of powder. What kind of powder you think? I'm a little curious about that. Um, do we still have the map? I wish we had the map still. That would be real nice. What is shifty looking? Well, he does call him a fox. Well, I think I think he might be being presumptuous about him being a fox. Could he have seen the king and his entourage enter the building from the Pont des Arts? That's my, that's my question. I'm not sure if he would have been able to, uh, to see him from there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna investigate that. You said you were sitting upon the railings of the Pont des Arts on the morning of the incident. Yep. What entrances can you see from that building? You had a good view of the Louvre South entrance, didn't you? The Ponte Arts is a great vantage point for seeing the Grand Gallery south side. Is it, though? Where are we at here? There's the Ponte Arts, and this is where the uh, entourage started, and that's the south entrance, so I suppose it's true. 
All right. Well, God, this. But, but. Our guy started over here. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. This was over here in the Jardin de Tuileries. What about the other entrances? The other, the other entrances. You mean like if you were entering from the Tuileries Gardens or the Place de Carousel? No, I couldn't possibly see those areas from the bridge. But of course this isn't relevant. Monsieur Kingley witnessed Prince Juan entering the south entrance with flower in hand, and that's what counts. What if Prince Juan didn't enter from the south entrance? What if he approached the Louvre from... The Tuileries Gardens to the west. What was it? What was that's it? That's where he started, okay, in the gardens. Okay, and the gardens. The, the gardens to the west. That's a big what if. Do you have any evidence that he entered from the gardens? As oh, a, we do, we do. As a matter of fact, I do. I have definitive proof that he approached from the west and not from the south. Hey, hey, I know what I saw, Monsieur. I'm doubtful, too. Go on, JJ. Show us this definitive proof that he entered from the gardens. The page. The page. The, the, the page. Look at this. A book page. Page 44 of Don Quixote. It was found just outside the Louvre's west entrance. This proves nothing. I'm not done yet. Take a look at this. Don Quixote. This is the book Prince Juan has been reading in jail since his arrest. I believe he has had it on his person for some time. And yes, page 44 is missing. That was the first thing I checked. You do realize what this means, don't you, Severin? The defendant was present in Tullier's gardens prior to entering the Louvre. That means that in all likelihood, the defendant entered the Louvre from the west entrance and not the south. He could not possibly have been seen by Monsieur Kingley here from the Pont des Arts. Well, well, what? I know, I know what I saw, Monsieur. A fine theory, Falcon. But maybe the defendant took the long way around. One can still travel from the Tuileries to the Louvre south entrance by walking along the river. An extra two kilometers of walking just to enjoy the pre-murder scenery? Let's not say silly things, Coco Rico. Okay, maybe the defendant deliberately left the page there to mislead the investigation. Now you're the one who's blindly speculating. It's not blind speculation, it's a viable hypothesis. You're fond of logic, aren't you, Coco Rico? Let's talk about Occam's razor. When torn between two seemingly equal hypotheses, we must side with the one that imposes the fewest assumptions. Which of these theories takes few th assumptions? The page from his book fell out on the way to the Louvre South entrance, or he deliberately planted the page on the off chance that it would be discovered, then he took the long way around. How dare you! The nerve of you to lecture me on such basic philosophical concepts. I'll stop lecturing you when you stop making such basic mistakes, you junker. Monsieur <laughs> Falcon, please calm yourself. What is the point of all of this yammering? The ultimate point is that Toussaint's testimony is fabricated, made up, out of fiction. No, no, everything I've said is the truth. I suspect that this witness isn't even a fisherman. I'm not a fisherman. See, he admits it. That, that, that's not what I meant. Hmm, oh, innocent perhaps. What a twist. You know what the problem is, though, Sparrison? I think our, I think our client's still a murderer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I should be defending him. But he is not the Prince of Spain. But he's not the Prince of Spain. He's an imposter, and I think he was actually trying to kill the king, and maybe the royal god got killed on accident. <laughs> Prosecutor, you have something that you will put in the arrogant falcon in his place, don't you? I must concede. You concede? On this point, at least, falcon's evidence strongly suggests that the key component of the kingly testimony is false. Ah, no! This doesn't mean that Prince Juan is innocent, of course. All Falcon has demonstrated is that this particular witness is unreliable. But I did see something. I did. All right, so maybe I didn't exactly see a shifty-looking fox. I, I made that part up. But I did see a swan lurking around the south entrance in the morning of the murder. A swan. Do shut up, witness. Your word is mud at this point. How can we possibly trust anything you have to say? Uh, your Honor, Judge Romulus? We're out of time. We're ten minutes overdue to start on Hare versus Tortoise trial. Is it that late? Curses, I was hoping we could have the case wrapped up in a single trial session. 
It's a shame, but ultimately an accurate sentencing is always preferable to a speedy sentencing. He is all right. I don't need to hear your moralizing. Court will resume this Friday, the 21st of January at 9 o'clock. Don't be late. Prosecutors, do your damn job. Get this stupid fox convicted already. I will do my best to ensure that justice is served, Your Honor. That's not what I asked! A lot came up in that trial, huh? Yeah, no doubt about that. But something's bothering me. Why would the fisherman guy, Monsieur Kingley, lie on the witness stand? Well, it's possible that he was coerced or bribed. That's just what I was thinking. Maybe the real murderer threatened the fisherman into making up the story about Prince Juan. Let's keep an open mind. Anything is possible at this stage. But to be perfectly honest, something else is bothering me about the trial. All of it? All, all of these things, honestly. Prince Juan <laughs> is not a prince. Ju that Judge Romulus kind of bothered me, too, though. Uh, uh, he came out of nowhere. People He's acting without a shred of professionalism. He's obviously more interested in securing a guilty verdict than he is in discovering the truth. But why? And you know what's even weirder is that... If all the foxes are being imposters, why is this imposter fox trying to convict another imposter fox? He's a wolf. <laughs> Maybe he has a vendetta against Spanish royalty. I'm not so sure. There must be something else at work here. <laughs> Irish. Okay. No. Um, Oh, oh, no, that's Ravington. Snively Ravington. <laughs> Sorry to bother you, but this letter arrived. I think it's for you. A letter? For me? I wonder why it wasn't sent to my office. Have you been demoted to courier status, Rupert? Oh, hush, hush, Sparris, and I don't need to be pitied by first you drop out. Ooh, good comeback. So, what does the letter say, Falcon? It's, uh, it's a threat. A threat with cut-out newspaper letters. Whoa. I didn't know those things actually existed. Let me see. Falcon, stop your investigation or there will be consequences. Scary. There's no question that this letter originated from Major Howell's murderer. He or she, or they, must be aware that we are getting close to uncovering the truth. Sounds about right, but why would a person write with cut out newspaper letters like this. Masking one's handwriting would be the most common reason. Although I can't help but wonder why they would bother since we don't have any handwriting samples to compare it to. We're still going ahead with the investigation though, right? Well, yeah, of course. <laughs> nope. We didn't come this far for nothing. <laughs> if a lawyer were deterred every time they received a threatening letter, they would never get any work done. Besides, with only three days before the next trial session, we can't be worrying about petty things like this. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Whoa, you're right. Let's make those days count. All right. So we got three more days to investigate this trial. This is a this is a two part trial. I think what we'll have to end up doing is going and confronting Prince Juan, talking to him directly. We should figure out the chocolate thing and prove that the chocolate was poisoned. And, uh, I don't know what else from there, but, uh, I think we're gonna wrap it up for, for this, because we've been going for a couple hours, and we're gonna have to do the rest of this in a part two, I think. I think so. Ugh. Oh, I'm not caffeinated. Actually, I was caffeinated. It didn't help. <laughs> I had a whole iced coffee. It did not help. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so, uh, we won't be doing this next week because we realized two things. Number one, next Thursday, December 12th at 8 p.m., uh, is the Game Awards. <laughs> so, we, we figure a lot of you will want to watch that, and we're gonna, I'm gonna want to watch that, so, uh, I'm not gonna compete with that stream. Um, on top of that, he won't be here next Thursday. I will not. And, 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 and he'll be on business. I'll be going and picking him up from the airport about that hour, too. So, uh, so we're gonna skip this for next week, um, and then we'll be, we'll be in Disney World and seeing Star Wars the week after that, so probably after Christmas is when we'll be going back to the game streams, unless we decide to do it on a different day, I don't know, these next couple weeks are a bit weird, dude, 
We're gonna be out of you're gonna be out of town a lot. <laughs> I am. It is not easy to wrap presents when you are not in town. <laughs> Um, but basically, we'll probably resume this on the 26th. Um, and then uh, after we finish this uh, aviary attorney, we're going to do DBH on PC. So that'll be what we do after that. I, what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to have you play DBH on PC, and I'll just watch. Because you've never actually played Detroit Become Human. You've I only... have not even seen the entire story. <laughs> you know, he, he has not actually played it. He has only watched me play parts of it, and he hasn't seen the whole thing. So it's actually a new experience for Austin. So that might actually be fun to have to give you the controls and watch you do, do excellently. <laughs> Is it on Steam? It will be on Epic Game Store. Oh, so no console commands. Guess not. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you so much for joining us, guys. Uh, Apu will be at its normal time Tuesday at noon next week. We have another production still from Detroit Evolution to show off that day, which will be a lot of fun. Um, so that's cool. And uh, Patreon, we've got a, a behind-the-scenes pic that got posted today for Patreon. We've also got a video with Chris Trinidad talking about Gavin tomorrow um, for Patreon as well. So, uh, yeah, we've got some cool stuff coming up. I've seen uh, Patreon postcards have started to go out and started to arrive at their destinations very swiftly. Um, I've ordered the greeting card ones for this month, so they'll be coming soon. We'll ship those out. I don't know how many people will be able to get them before Christmas, but we're going to try to get most of you guys before Christmas and, and get those out speedy. Um, but yeah, try, try to prepare for heartache when Austin makes a slip when he plays. Yeah, you fall and die and all the characters, and then you get the camp scanning. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so we're going to head off to bed and well, you're going to head off to bed. I'm going to probably stay up till five in the morning and edit DE as I oh, have been that, for the last month. That reminds me that I have to go to work early tomorrow. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no, Sparrison. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Um, but yeah, so uh, I'll see you around guys and see you next Tuesday at noon for Apu. Remember as always, stay great, hydrate, unlike us on this stream and uh, have a happy time. So. Bye-bye.